Welcome to this brand new vlog, which is all about these three totally awesome things. Australia, New Zealand, Holland America line. And within these awesome things, we're going to show you these two. I love you, Mr. Proto. Oh, oh my goodness. What's going on? I don't think he's turned sinister, do you? Absolutely chucking it down. Shutting and pussing! Oh. Welcome to Nordam in New Zealand. Welcome, lovely viewers, to part two of this trip of a lifetime on board Holland America Line's Petite MS Nordam. Well, by today's standards, she's petite. <laughs> we love Vista class because of their relatively compact size, around 2,000 guests, and sleek, adult, no bells, no whistles profile. In short, she's a bit of a babe. Let's crack on with the itinerary, which starts nine days into the cruise. Welcome to Timaru. It's another beautiful day, but what we're going to do is just Timaru on your own. I think it's what it's called, isn't it? Timaru on foot. Timaru on foot. So we're going to catch the shuttle bus because we can't get out of the port without the shuttle bus. There's a girl with a map. That's what we like to see. Good morning. We love a map. After much bus confusion, we are on the right one, I think, to what's called Caroline Bay. Oh my goodness, it's packed in here. Actually quite a big port for what I assume to be a tiny place. We just got off the coach and this rather helpful lady is getting a free tour here. This is good, isn't it? Get down to the beach and there's a walk away around there. Fantastic. That's all I'll do. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So, welcome to Timaru. We're walking down this lovely long straight. Anyway, Timaru, well, it doesn't get many big ships in, so they're really, really pleased to see us, I think. The Nordam second visit here. There she is over there. Now we're on like a boardwalk now. Okay, so we've hit the beach. No, it's not exactly Bondi Beach. It's a little bit more rustic than that. The sea's lovely and smooth. And they do get seals and penguins and all sorts of things on here. But today, the weather is perfect, not a breath of wind. I've just made Helen crawl in there to have a picture. I think you can go in. Shall we go in? Say hello, look. Hello. I like you. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing now. What are you doing now? Oh. Oh my goodness. What's going on? Hello. Oh, look, Helen. Just come and see us. Hello. <laughs> Jenny, come <laughs> to what an absolute cutie you are, aren't you? I don't think he's turned sinister, do you? <laughs> like a sinister stare. So, yeah, if you're in Timaru, on a cruise, you must come to the Avery. <laughs> it's such fun. Outside oh, like the Rose Garden, and there's the Rose Garden for you horticulturalists among you. Very pretty though, look. Lots of different varieties of roses. Well, I was kind of trying to avoid it, but Helen's made me go into the Rose Garden. Apparently she likes roses. Who knew? And now, 
We've got to descend the stairs. Descend the stairs, darling. Oh, yeah. Descending would be a lot easier. Maybe if I went up backwards, it would class as descending. That is one piece of downpipe, <laughs> isn't it? We must have had a lot of rain over the weekend. There's no rain here, so I don't think it's rain, darling. Looks like rain. Oh, look, there's a giant donut of naked people. Get in there, darling. We're getting the giant naked donut. Smile. Here lies the statue of Bob Ruby Robert Fitzsimmons. Middle, lightweight, heavyweight, and heavyweight boxer. Okay, three classes of weights. Born in England, grew up in Timaru, where he learned to box, beating all opponents. Fitz will always remain one of our greatest sporting heroes. I gotta live like the Fitz. He's looking for a fight, though, isn't he? Okay, so we are in Timaru in a lovely little cafe. It's a port city. It's also known for its elegant Victorian and Edwardian buildings made of volcanic blue stone. 87% of Timaru district residents find it is still a good place to live. Do you know that Timaru derives its name from Maori terms meaning either shady cabbage tree or place of shelter? Agriculture is a major influence on the economy. The Timaru district has grown to become New Zealand's food bowl. Hey, it's nice coffee. Mm -hmm. Large flat wine. Three shots. Mm -hmm. We're back on the shuttle bus. What did you think of Timaru, darling? Very sweet little town. And back to the ship now. And um, because actually we've got an early departure at 2 p.m. Yeah. All aboard 2 p.m. We're heading for Picton next, and it's probably too far away to leave in the evening. So see you back at the ship. The evening was another dressy evening with a gala dinner in the main dining room. You can see this in more detail in our complete dining guide. We'll leave a link here and at the end. After dinner we headed to the theatre for a virtuoso piano show from guest pianist Hyperion Knight, a memorable performer who we first met on our first Seabourn cruise. Welcome to Picton and more logs. La hog, la hog, it's brown, it's heavy, it's wood. La hog, la hog, it's better than bad, it's good. Everyone loves a log. Bonus points in the comments if you know where that song is from. Ladies giving out flowers. We're just waiting for a shuttle bus because we're sort of on a little bit of a peninsula and it's got to go into town. Free shuttle bus. Yeah. And then we've got hours to wander around Picton. Yeah. And then we're kayaking. Kayak. Anyway, so we're uh, in Picton, which is actually the 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 sort of ferry terminal between the north and the south. So you can always get the ferry from Wellington to Picton, and it's the sort of gateway to the South Island. And uh, just look at this though. Doesn't that look great? Yeah, we've got an hour to uh, spare before we meet with the kayakers. Just gonna have a little stroll around Picton and see what's what. Look at that though, that's stunning. Really not shy. No, it's dark. I feel like the parrot yesterday, if you watch the I think you the might vlog. be after your laces. I think the, I think, I think all birds wanna kill me. I think that's the thing in New Zealand. Look at him. I don't think I've ever had a duck come so close no. to me. Hello. I, I wonder if I can sort of crouch down and you won't run away. You won't either. Look at you. Hmm. Oh, bye then. <laughs> yeah. You didn't want to get that close to your head. No. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> Let's go and walk down here, shall we? Whenever we visit anywhere, I has to stop and have a look at the local prices of houses. Picton continues in the tradition of having lovely wide roads. This one's got a garden in the middle. Oh, we're just going to stop for a just going to stop for a quick coffee. Oh, this looks really nice in here, actually. And we're just adopting the pace of life in Picton. Very laid back. Mm. 
Picton facts. Sir Thomas Picton was a commander under the Duke of Wellington in the Peninsula War, and he achieved fame as the hero of Badajoz. Um, but he was killed in the Battle of Waterloo. There you go. Built around a very sheltered harbour, the town has an attractive seafront dotted with cafes, restaurants, various types of galleries. There's also a floating maritime museum and an aquarium. Did you know that? No, I can't see that. Local operators can take you cruising, fishing, dolphin watching, dolphin watching, sea kayaking, we're going there, or mountain biking. 100% pure Picton, right here for your enjoyment. The Wilderness Guides New Zealand.com. That's who we've booked our kayaking with. Through Viator, actually. It's really convenient at a fraction of the cost of the official excursion. excursion. Yeah, it was about a quarter of the cost, so, so significantly. Deeper. So if you're looking to save some pennies to spend on cocktails later. Okay, so we're, <laughs> we're all togged up, looking pretty fly. Are you two ready? We are ready. Perfect. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> Instant capsize. You can see the ship in the background there. Guess who's doing all the work? You alright there, babe? Nice day for it, isn't it? Are you doing all the work? Yeah. <laughs> Rather enjoying this track. No, let's just say I have been kayaking most of the way. What a day out you're having, honey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it's a little kit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still right. <laughs> Carry on. La, 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 la. Look at the beach bunny. Look how far we've come. Actually, we've come round the island. There's, there's just mud, there's mool everywhere. We're out in the, it's very, it's very choppy now. We're going around that corner, we're in the main strait, but uh, we're following the tide, so it's just sort of taking us down. Whoa, it's hard work getting here, I'll tell you. We're going against the wind, against the tide, against everything. Can't remember how long we've been out on the water now, but whoa, we're getting tired. Nearly three hours. This, this bay is just awesome. Fancy living there and then just strolling out into the beach and seeing rays and penguins. Right, this is our final stretch, but as you can see, there's a bit of a swell building. I thought I could murder a beer and a burger and some fries. Well, we're here and uh, we made it. Water. Oh. Uh. Thank you. The sail away from Picton was spectacular, and all the better if viewed from the crow's nest which was a good plan considering not one of our limbs were functioning after the kayaking. Well, a lone arm with just enough strength to pick up a glass of something strong and delicious. That was all that was needed. Today uh, is an unscheduled stop because we were due to be in Napier in the North Island but because of the storms it got cancelled. <coughs> but because of that they put Wellington on the map as a call and we've got this rather good juicy tour we're going on today. It's a very Lord of the Ringsy tour. So if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings or Flight of the Concords or Wellington Paranormal, oh, give us a thumbs up because today is going to be very special. So watch this edit. It's going to be fun. Hold on to your hats, it's windy Wellington. <laughs> Despite Wellington being a last minute stop, the excursion team worked hard to put together an array of shore excursions and we signed up for the Lord of the Rings and Weta studio tour. Okay, we're at our first stop, Mount Victoria. Although we knew that most of Lord of the Rings had been filmed here, we were amazed at how big a role this part of New Zealand plays in the global movie industry. 
The Shire filming locations on Mount Victoria was fascinating, and the guide was brilliant, bringing the scenes to life. You think the X did it? The they were called Stobbits. <laughs> Start Hobbits, Stobbits. The Stobbits were basically kids. All right, the Hobbit point out is just down here. We have made the tree, they brought the tree in here and had the tree standing here. Now I can see that some of you want to get down there and have a photo. <laughs> Standing under that tree, and he says, I think we should get off the road. He's standing here, and he's sort of feeling, he's got this feeling that there's something coming. Then it was back on the coach for a quick stop at the lookout for some fabulous views over the city. And then we drove through the part of the city where all the film studios were located. We never knew there was so much here mostly due to the film director Peter Jackson, the fourth highest grossing film director of all time, who was born in Wellington and still bases himself here. Lastly, we visited the Weta workshop for an in-depth tour of their role in developing prosthetics, costumes, scenery and so much more in the making of some of the most iconic films of the last 20 years. Never heard of them? Well, they've been responsible for Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Alien franchise, Stranger Things on Netflix, Men in Black, Predator, the new Planet of the Apes films, and many more. Unfortunately, the main exhibition rooms on the tour were off limits for photography, so I'm afraid you'll have to visit yourself to see the real gems inside. Back on board our lovely home, we had a little rest in the afternoon before heading up to the Crow's Nest for a G&T sail away, before drinks in the Pinnacle Bar, dinner in the main dining room, and comedy in the Rolling Stone Lounge. I said, what's the demographic on the cruise? I need to know so I can work my material out and who I talk to. And the cruise director goes, Michael, Michael, come here, come here. He goes, put it this way. You're 50 and you're only one of 10 kids on board. <laughs> Another wonderful evening of entertainment, food and stunning views. After a run of four extremely busy days, a day spent at sea in our favourite place, the Crow's Nest, was a much needed chance to relax. To summarise the day, we had breakfast in the main dining room, lunch at the dive in, where else, and dinner back in the main dining room. Fully carb loaded for the highlight of the day, the orange party in the Rolling Stone Lounge. There's an orange party on every cruise, which celebrates the Dutch fondness for the colour orange. This is a nod to the royal family, which is made up of members of the House of Orange. The dynasty dates back to 1544, when William of Orange inherited the estate and title at the age of just 11. The guests are encouraged to wear something orange, although it's not mandatory, but it's definitely fun to join in. In the Rolling Stone lounge, the band plays while Dutch treats are bought around, profiteroles, beignets with an apple filling and Dutch almond biscuits, while the bar team kept us topped up with orange-themed cocktails and drinks. Plenty of people danced the night away and lots of the crew wore orange wigs. Must get a couple of those for next time. So, good morning from Taranga. Today, it's a very exciting day. We're going to the Shire. We've booked a <laughs> tour, so now we've just got to find them. It's not a ship tour, it's one we did independently. So now we've just got to find the guys. Okay, we are on this bus. Duncan's bus. I'm gonna spend an hour and a half getting there, and then a few hours there, and hopefully, hopefully back before it rains. And we've got a traditional Aussie meat pie. It's mince and cheese. <laughs> what does the book say? Oh, it's a map of the Shire. Look, look at that. This is one of the highlights of our whole trip. I've only got one thing to say to you. 
You're going to give me a Samwise Gandhi <laughs> quote, aren't you? I haven't got one going to the We love you, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> I knew it. It had to be done. We're on the coach. Too exciting for words. The moss and all the ageing on these things are not real, apparently. Nothing is real. Well, apart from the veggie patch, that's real. Oh, Whoa, look at the bath. Oh, mate. Welcome to the Shire, young Bilbo. Is that right? Smoke coming out of that chimney, isn't it? Yeah. That's cute. This is the view from Bilbo and Frodo Baggins' house. Bag End. How cool is that? The other lot have just left. It means that we are the only ones. And we're in the Green Dragon. We're in the Green Dragon, having a, a yard of mead. So, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to a brilliant day. We're back in Taranga. We've been at Hobbiton, had an absolutely amazing time. Look at that, Luke. I've still got some of the Shire on my bag. The actual Shire. How <laughs> cool is that? Taken video of this gorgeous beach. It's only like a small, tiny bit of it. It goes on 40 kilometres all the way down 40 there. 40 kilometre beach. And it's full of surfers. There's a lovely walkway here. We're just walking down now across the beach. It is raining. Moderate to well done rain, I think. <laughs> Things are getting pretty wet now. I am literally going to put my hood up. <laughs> it's getting pretty bad now. Is that a coffee shop? I want to. Oh, it's a gelato shop. That'll do. Let's go and get some gelato. This has made me happy. Chocolate ice cream and coffee, and I'm happy now. So yes, we're going to walk around the uh, the mountain. Three kilometres. Let's go. Absolutely gorgeous walk. I mean, there's just so many like little beaches that are kind of just little craggy nooks and crannies and you don't know what's around the corner, do you? Look at this. Another lovely viewpoint. I know the weather's come in, but imagine this on a sunny day. Gorgeous would it be. You can look and see the surface over there. Halfway around the mount. Where are we around the mount? Yeah, like almost exactly. You just wonder how old some of these trees are because they must be centuries old because they're just like, well, they like things out of Lord of the Rings. Look at that in there, look. We're about two thirds of the way around, or three quarters of one, I don't know. Beautiful beach. Absolutely chucking it down. And then you get this. Mm. There's the ship. We've got a lovely Nordam poking through at us. Oh my goodness. Don't get that in the UK. Okay, we're back on the street. This is called the Mall, which is lovely, isn't it? Look <laughs> at Helen. I have to say, it hasn't let up at all. As you can see, we're on the way back now. We're on this beautiful promenade. We will look back and go, do you remember that time when all the way over to New Zealand got absolutely soaked? You know how you get hangry? Yes. I get wangry. <laughs> wangry. <laughs> that sounds like a rude word. <laughs> when I get wet, I get angry. 
You're wangry, I'm I'm weirful, which is wet but cheerful. They don't care, do they? The Taranga Society of Wet Rugby. The Wet Rugby League. This is the last bit, and it's worse than all the other bits. <laughs> the weather is absolutely... <laughs> the weather is absolutely... <laughs> Pussing it down, as they say in New Zealand. No, pussing, no, shutting it, or pussing it. Shitting it down. Or pussing it. It's <laughs> shutting. It no, it's shutting and pussing. Oh, look at that, though. You get a nice sort of romantic view of the Nor Dam. How lovely, resplendent in its wetness. Oh gosh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. Oh. Come to New Zealand, they said. Height of summer. Welcome to New Zealand. We'll see you on the other side with a gin and tonic. Oh yeah. I don't think I can see. How are we, honey? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Good luck out there. Good luck. Our final day was a scenic sail towards our final destination, Auckland. We sailed past White Island, which smoked and steamed to remind us to keep well away. It was the 9th of December 2019, and 47 tourists were on the island, a popular destination for cruise excursions at the time, when the volcano violently and without warning erupted. 22 people died and a further 25 suffered injuries. Tragedies like this are extremely rare, but the steaming crater was a poignant reminder of that tragic day. So, as we approached Auckland and the farewell show brought this spectacular cruise to an end, it was a struggle to summarise any highlights because, quite frankly, it was all a highlight. Holland America Line excelled itself with the itinerary, the ship and her crew. We can't wait to show you our next HAL adventure, so please continue watching by clicking one of these. Thank you. <laughs>